Welcome to this episode of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to finally get around to installing the ARG Tech range extender on the Phantom 3 controller. Now, one of the things, no, I'm not bleeding again with this. I've just marked this out because I am going to install or drill, take the advantage while I have this part to drill a hole and put a bolt through here for the... Um, iPad holder, but that's a little bit different story. So I'm going to just focus really in this video on uh, Installing this setup. So first thing we want to do is flip this over and One of the things you'll notice is that there's four screws in the back And we're going to want to remove these uh, screws. I'm going to set this off to the side Move this over here to catch my screws and then I'm going to kind of fast forward through this piece So it's not so boring Okay, so now that we have this open, one of the things I'd highly suggest doing is taking a picture of this so you have an understanding of the layout of the wires so you can put it back together. Because notice we have the battery. Now this is one of the things I'd like to, uh, to note is the size of this battery. It is a fairly small LiPo battery, so it's not that huge compared to um, the ones in the up air. So uh, the charge is, is definitely gonna be a lot shorter. So I'm just going to put a little bit of tape by these so I remember what's what. And just on some of the more major ones. So I'm going to mark this. I'm going to mark this. And I'm going to pull this plug. And then I'm going to do a similar piece here. Oops, tape keeps sticking to my fingers. And I'm just going to put this one up here. And then notice what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two hash marks on this one. Where I only put one hash mark on the other one. So that's how I'm going to keep these. So I just typically make hash marks. I'm going to pop this. This one's a little bit self-explanatory since it's only a twofer. So now we can remove the back. So I'm going to set the back off to the side. So uh, now one of the pieces that, I, that uh, I wanted to see as I disassembled this is if I was clear on the back side of this, and I am. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this opportunity right now to drill that hole, and then we're going to come back and install the antenna. Okay, so through the magic of video, we now have a hole there, which is what I needed. Um, so I'll deal with that a little bit later because I probably have to snip some of these, uh, some some of that away. So uh, anyhow, back to the antenna mod. Um, so if you notice here, we have we have the black, we have a black, which runs to the center control plane antenna, which I believe is 5.8 gigs, and then we have um, a black, also a black and a gray that run to these two panel antennas, which I believe are 2.4 gig uh, receiving antennas. So now what you're going to want to do is take a small kind of flathead screwdriver like this to kind of remove some of this material and then pop these SMA connectors up off the board. So it's going to take a little bit to do that. And I'm going to clean this up. Uh, so I'll just pop this one up. And that one's there. And this one's really stuck on there. So I'm going to have to clean those up in a second. So one of the things to keep in mind, this down here is the transmitting piece. And this piece up here is a receiving piece for the video. So just kind of keep that in mind. So your center pole is going to go to that. And I'll talk to that a little bit when we get to the assembly process. But for right now, I'm going to um, work to clean up some of this uh, silicone. Now, one of the things, I've seen a number of videos, I'm going to talk about it when I'm cleaning, trying to clean this up, is they use hot glue. Do not use hot glue on these. I'm going to use a marine, a marine grade silicone uh, adhesive. This is being a little bit difficult. I think I'm going to have to bring in different reinforcements for this. Now, 
I'm going to use, see if I can use an X-Acto knife to kind of clean up some of this. Okay, so we're back. We popped this off. This just pops out of here. And you can see this is the lead for our control plane antenna. Now you can see we have these panel antennas. You could leave these in here and just tuck them up. I'm not sure I want to keep the extra weight. So I'm just going to pry up with the corner of my finger on each side. They're just really in there with a little bit of silicone adhesive. Uh, actually what I'm going to do is take my X-Acto knife, which I had put away prematurely, and kind of cut this without tr trying to cut my fingers. So this is taking a little bit of force. I'm going to try to score these a little bit. And I'm going to try popping this out. So it, it uh, snapped a little bit of piece of that plastic off, but that doesn't matter because we aren't going to use those again. This one is being a little bit more persnickety. And I'm going to pop this one out. Now I do, I, I, I plan on keeping these. These might be interesting for other projects. Um, so... I don't want to do away with them. I don't want to damage them. Um, okay. So now we have that that done. So we removed the uh, antenna assemblies. So remember, we have our control plane down here, and then we have our um, receive here. And actually, I, I can see here on the board. And I want to make sure I'm getting it inside the frame. It's even marked 2.4 gig on here for the receivers. So a couple of things to note on your panel antennas. You'll have two 7PAs seven, seven and one 6PA. So this is the 5.8. These are the 2.4s. Also notice these are 7 dBi. This is 6 dBi. Uh, so I'm going to run with an omnidirectional for the control plane and I'm going to run with these for the, the video. But however, before we do that, one of the things I want to do not that I want to do it, I have to do it, is again, open this up. This is the bag with the, um, the mounting bracket on here, which came really nice. And it's also got these really nice little covers. I would suggest saving these. Uh, you know, so if you take them off for storage, you can put them back on to keep this all nice and clean and moisture free. And so what we want to do is we want to thread these through here and we're not going to bolt this down because we're going to have to put the before we actually bolt this to the unit we need to actually put the back back on so that'll be uh, a minute or so however we what we want to do is connect these up so what we're going to do is if i recall correctly and let's do some checking let's get our handy dandy ancient uh, Radio Shack ohm meter out here just to be sure and I believe white is the longest cable also notice how long these are and then let's um, let's do a little bit of a continuity test this might not be the prettiest thing you've ever seen but so if I hold it to the ground there and I touch the ground there you know so I've t touched this so the white is the center so that's good and then so what I'm going to do now is, I just want to look at something there. Um, I'm going to take this SMA connector and connect it at the bottom here. And then it might be a little bit, you want to make sure you get straight and you get four straight down on it. It should pop. Now what I've done is again use this small screwdriver to uh, put even pressure on the top of this. Now the next thing I'm going to do is the black should go in the middle which should be this connector right here. 
And one of the things you'll notice, I'm going to move the multimeter out so we've already checked that, um, is that, that the lines are staged at the length they go, which is really a nice forethought of, of uh, these guys when they design this product. And again, that snaps on, and then the gray will go at the very top. So it's really easy, really easy peasy assembly. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. This guy's being a little bit difficult. I just want to make sure everything's good. It does look good. I'd hate to be the person that had to put these little SMA connectors on. I used to, in a former life, have to put on a bunch of UHF connectors. And those were always a pain. I can't even imagine how you would crimp these on. I'm sure there's some kind of automated tool for that now. Okay, so that popped. So that's good. Now I want to make sure that these, these are all situated. Okay. Okay, so we're back. So one of the quick things I'm going to do to tidy this up, is I'm going to take two small zip strips, and I'm going to run one through the bottom here to kind of hold these together. Keep from moving, cinch, cinch it down. And then I'm going to take a second more so near the top and do similar to kind of keep these together. And I'm going to kind of pull up so the extra materials at the top here and then don't mind the oversized wire nippers my smaller ones are on the other side of the shop and I don't feel like turning off the camera so uh, just snip those now what this will do is run these up through this center piece kind of keep them out of the way but one of the things I wanted to go back to a little bit is the protecting these connectors. So I, I notice on the internet a lot of folks are going with the uh, hot glue and that is probably a bad idea. Why is that a bad idea? One of the big things you'll notice they don't use hot glue on these when you take it apart. It's, it's a silicone, so I have some here, it's a silicone adhesive and this silicone adhesive uh, is what I want to use to cover back up. Why? Because one of the big things Moisture to microwave radiation is, is evil. So that's the one big thing you want to protect this against is any type of moisture getting in here. And also you want to leave it a little bit so it flexes but it doesn't pull apart. So this is one of the things that um, is important. So what I'm going to do is use some aquarium based silicone, 100% silicone adhesive, some clear to go on here. I'm going to be use a little bit of a toothpick to apply it. So I've squeezed a little bit out on a piece of plastic here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the toothpick and I'm going to kind of roll up a bit of a glob of it, if you will. This is not going to be too pretty, so uh, don't expect it to be. And then I'm going to start here at the bottom. And then work this glob in and over top of this connector. You want to push it down, obviously, so it makes some con uh, connection with the board beneath it, too, a little bit. Uh, so, again, get this guy. And this will be, if you need to, for some reason, to change this, maybe a better version comes out in the future, it'll be easier to change with this silicone than it will be for a hot glue, too. So, big tip here, use the silicone. Get my fingers in a little excess silicone there. So again, getting that in there. Now the other thing is I'm doing this that I would mention is before you close up the case, I would let I would let this silicone cure for about 30 minutes or so. Let it get nice and set up. I want to come back to this one. I don't think I got enough on here. So again, you want to Got a piece of the old stuff in there. All right, 
So I've now got silicone adhesive on there. So I'm going to let this sit up for about a half hour, an hour, just to make sure it's, it's cured. Um, especially because one of the things we're going to be doing is jiggling the wires as we mount this top piece on. So I want to make sure that uh, everything is set up before I start doing this. So I'm going to let this set for, again, as I mentioned, 30, 30 to 60 minutes. We'll come back and then we'll button this up. Oh, before I go, I want to show you one of the pieces. So why I was off camera, I also mounted this other piece. So I've got this off of eBay. So all I did was drill a hole through the piece, as you mentioned. So anyway, um, I just kind of wanted to show you this piece. I did did have to grind this down a little bit on the lathe to get, get this fairly level here. You could use a hacksaw, whatever. This is, I think, designed for the Phantom 4 uh, holder, and you can kind of see the larger end down here. I used some snippers to snip this out. So kind of a little bonus build in this piece of how to install this. And so now this is solid and uh, I won't have a problem when I want to use my big iPad on here. So again, we'll come back in about 30. Okay, so we're back. Um, this The silicone set up. So now all we have to do is start reassembly of the uh, uh, unit. And it's going to go back together, in short, the way it came apart. So I'm going to reattach the power cable first. As you recall, this uh, came in this section right here, so that's just snapped in and Then this was two so this goes up here to the top piece. I'm going to remove that piece of tape and Insert the connector in here And then this one's going to go into the bottom. I'm going to remove the tape from it that's a little easier said than done. There we go, tape removed. I'm going to also remove this piece of tape here while I'm thinking about it so I don't forget and leave it in there. Alright, that's removed. And just go ahead and plug this back in. Oops, I think I had to flip that guy around. And then boom, we have that. So uh, make sure you don't crimp any of your wires in, into the case. And then we're going to see this top piece kind of slides up inside that other piece and then locks down. I got to still got a piece of tape down here. To remove. And uh, I think everything is there. So let's go ahead. And let's take these screws and we're just going to drop all four back into their holes like this. So, whoops, got that the wrong hole. Uh, it goes in that hole. And then it the goes in here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward me tightening the screws. All right, so we got the back reattached. I'm gonna remove these antennas. Now, one of the things, I'm gonna pull this bag out. Now, they do give you a screwdriver. I like my screwdriver better. Uh, so I used it, but they do give you a screwdriver. So let's go ahead. We need to take these bolts out, nuts and bolts. Uh, and then, because the way we're gonna attach this, That wasn't seated all the way on there. See, because you can see inside here that this is going to fit on here like this. So let me see if I got this so I can zoom in on this profile. And then what's going to happen is we're going to take this and notice notice this profile needs to match this profile. And you'll notice that the nut side goes down. And so the nuts just kind of fit in there. It's maybe a little bit easier said than done. It's typical. You want no fingernails, it's hard to pick them up. Uh, there we go, we have that one in. So what I'm going to do is kind of hold my finger on this and kind of twist it over and try to get this screw started. It's a little bit hard working around the cameras and jigs, but we can do it, can't we? Okay, so that's, I don't want to tighten it up just yet. I just snugged it. 
so it stays on there because I'm going to try dropping this other screw in and that one's there and I want to try flipping this one over and that's not going to go so I'm going to cheat a little bit I think and try using the pliers there we go and we're gonna do this now that I got both these on here I'm gonna work to snug both of these up pretty tight and there we go and you see it's on there you can kind of square it up a little bit because it still will turn on here because it's just mounting on that collar so it's not uh, I don't want to say perfect, but uh, so now we're gonna put we're gonna put on our panel antennas, and we're gonna mount this guy sort of like this. It's being a little bit difficult. Alrighty, there we go. We sort of got it. We got the first panel now. Remember, we're going with the. Um, with the uh, model 7 PAs uh, for the receiving antennas for the video and we got this and so we got those in place now I'm not going to install the 5.8 I'm going to talk about that in a minute I'm going to sit here and try to figure out so oh okay this is nice I was a little bit concerned about this but uh, open the package and you notice it says 5 gig here so that's good so we know which one's which because I'm assuming these are gonna say nothing so that one says nothing this one says nothing so you know these are the 2.4's there's some writing here but that's nothing oh it does say 2.4 gig you really can't see it it's just embossed in the plastic I wonder if this one says yeah, this one says 5.8 gig. It's embossed in the plastic here. I don't know if you can see it. And again, like I said, I'm going to go with the omnidirectional for the control plane because there's enough kick in this. Um, and sort of looks like it's given the finger, doesn't it? But uh, there we go. So we've now got the range extended set up with the uh, Argitech range extender set up turn this on everything seems to be working power so I got all the cables hooked up right we'll make sure it charges I've added this piece got this so I'm pretty much set now just one of the brief things I I wish I could see some propagation maps so one of the things when you design antennas or measure antennas you have typically what's called a polar propagation map and it shows the, the sort of how the radiated effect of the antenna is in a polar plane um, I think that's probably about the simplest way I could put it now I'm guessing that these panel antennas are going to probably have a, about a 60 degree cone just a wild ass guess on my part so um, you know don't write any hate mail down below if I'm wrong but if I am wrong and you do know for sure let me know in the comments below I would really like to know what the what you know the propagation a lobe of these things look like again I'm guessing roughly 60 degrees now the reason I say this is this can get kind of interesting because you can sort of use this to find my drone if you will because again as you turn outside of that 60 degree cone you're going to lose the copter now uh, one of the things since I have two of these I'm gonna have two 60 degree cones coming out from these guys so I'm gonna have actually a far more effective uh, area than 60 degrees and this is one of the reasons I'm not going with the um, uh, other panel antenna for the control plane this one uh, because again this is going to do far better well I shouldn't say far but it's going to do better than this omnidirectional one uh, is however it's going to need to be pointed with inside that cone at all times 
And if you happen to veer away to talk to a friend, you know, say you're flying, you turn like this and say, hey, Bob, how's it going? And you lose signal, then guess what? As you're talking to Bob, it's going to start returning to home because it's going to lose signal. With this, you're going to pick up quite a bit of gain over this guy. So you can kind of look and just, you know, size does matter in this case. Uh, quite a bit difference. I'm going to move this back here, but you can kind of see if I show you between these two is a pretty big difference. And so, again, between these guys and these panels, definitely a big difference. So, um, I, again, you should be able to kind of locate the general direction of your drone by, by pointing this and, and watching your signal, um, you know, your video feed kind of fade in and out to kind of get a direction. So, anyways, hopefully you found this interesting. Uh, if you did, hey, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe button is going to be coming up over there. If you have comments, hit me up below. And hey, we'll see you in the next video. Oh, and by the way, I'll have links for this below, of course. See ya.